Hi everyone, this is Andrew Roboto here, and I would like to do a different type of video today, something I've never done on my channel before. It is a commentary video, which today I will be doing my first commentary video on my channel, which is about the which is the, about the Dylan Redmond story, which that video is on his Horror Stories channel. Um, for those that don't know, Horror Stories is a YouTuber who makes videos, horror story videos such as Dylan Redwine or many other people or famous events that happen and whatnot. Um, and I will be uploading these videos periodically because um, I was requested by my cousin to do commentary videos on my channel while I was on vacation in New York and that's actually the reason why I haven't been uploading videos the past couple days so I apologize for that. And um, anyways Anyways, I will provide the link in the description for the Horror Stories channel as well as the video on Dylan Redwine if you want to check it out. As well as some um, news sources and about um, of Dylan and whatnot. But um, anyways, without further ado, I will play the video and give my comments and thoughts about it. 13-year-old Dylan Redwine was last seen on November 18th, 2012 during a visit to his father's house in Vallecito, Colorado for the Thanksgiving holiday. Dylan's father, Mark Redwine, claims that Dylan went to sleep around 9 p.m. on the night of the 18th. According to Elaine Hall on the Dr. F on the Dr. Phil show, um, 9 p.m. is actually kind of was kind of too early for Dylan to go to bed. Dylan typically went to bed at around 11 p.m. or midnight because Dylan was a texter, and he would always be texting his friends late at night into like 11 or midnight. And that his son was still at the house at 7.30 a.m. when Mark left to do some errands that morning. After returning home at 11.30 a.m., Redwine noticed his son was gone, but assumed he had left to visit one of his friends. Redwine then claimed he took a nap and started looking for Dylan around 2.33 p.m. before alerting police about his missing child. Before Mark Redwine went to search for Dylan, um, this was revealed in the testimony. Um, Mark Redwine went to Dylan's friends Ryan and Tristan's house to see if Dylan went there because Dylan made plans to meet up with them the next day. But of course they told him Dylan wasn't there. Months later, Dylan's parents would accuse each other of being involved with the disappearance of their son during an interview on the Dr. Phil show. In that interview, Mark Redwine mentions that Nickelodeon was on the television when he returned home that morning, and that he didn't notice all of his son's possessions were missing, including Dylan's fishing pole. Mark Redwine also mentions that um, he also didn't notice that Dylan's backpack wasn't there and he mentions that the fishing pole was never found. In response, Dylan's mother Elaine Hall claims Dylan watched MTV and not Nickelodeon. She also claims that Dylan had no interest in fishing and didn't even know how to string up the line for his fishing pole. She also said that, um, that if Dylan were to go see a friend, he wouldn't have taken all his belongings with him and his backpack was never found either. She then went on to say that her ex-husband didn't know his son well enough to make up a believable story. When questioned why the two weren't setting their differences aside to focus on the search for their son, Elaine Hall claims that Mark Redwine's only contact with her was a text message telling her Dylan was missing. She then tried to call and text Redwine in response, but couldn't because he had blocked her number. Redwine claims he did call his ex-wife and was met with accusations suggesting he had something to do with the disappearance. He then stated that his wife never tried to call him. Both Elaine and Dylan's older brother, Corey, claim that Mark Redwine made no attempts to help search for Dylan and never attended any events to raise funds and awareness for the missing teen. That was that was true. Um, according to testimonies by police, um, Mark Redwine did everything other than look for Dylan. Later in the episode, Dr. Phil questions Redwine about the results of a polygraph test he had taken, and Redwine states that he failed one polygraph and that a second test came up as inconclusive. 
In another segment, Redwine is asked to take a polygraph on the show. He agreed, but wanted to take the test the following day because he felt overwhelmed at the time. The next day, the polygraph was canceled 20 minutes into the hour and a half long process after Redwine was asked if he felt well enough to take the test, to which he responded, no. He then stated that the reason he didn't feel well was because he only got three hours of sleep and drank half a bottle of Jim Beam the previous night. Yeah, for Mark Redwine, um, when he did the polygraph test, um, he actually said to Dr. Phil that there were conflicts as to what the results were. He was told he failed it, then he was told it was inconclusive. And then he was also told and then he also later decided not to do a polygraph test. On June 27, 2013, it was announced that Dylan Redwine's remains were discovered near Middle Mountain Road, eight miles from Mark Redwine's home. They did not find Dylan's skull. Shortly after the teen's body was discovered, Redwine made comments to one of Dylan's brothers, stating that investigators would have to find the rest of the body, including the skull, before they could determine what had happened to the boy. On November 1st, 2015, Dylan's skull was found a mile and a half distance from where the other remains were found. Investigators say they found signs of blood force trauma and marks similar to those made by a knife and not wildlife or some other natural occurrence. They also don't believe an animal managed to carry the boy's body eight miles away and instead concluded that the body and skull must have been moved and placed by a human. Which was proven to be correct because, um... There weren't any animals out there during the time when Dylan went missing because they were hibernating. So an animal couldn't have carried or attacked Dylan eight miles away. Multiple people claim Redline has a short temper and a long history of violence. That's true. Um, according to Betsy Horvath, Mark's first wife, um, Mark Red, as well as many other people, Mark Redline had a, a violent temper and a long history of violence. Ex-wife Betsy Horvath told investigators that Redwine was abusive during their six-year marriage, and once said if he ever had to hide a body, he'd put it in the mountains. She also claims that Mark repeatedly violated a custody agreement and told her he would kill the kids before he let her have them. According to Elaine Hall, Redwine wasn't just fighting her for custody of their children, he wanted half of everything, including one shoe from every pair of shoes she owned. Before Dylan's court-ordered visit to stay with his father in November of 2012, the 13-year-old stood before a judge and stated that he did not feel comfortable around his father for various reasons. That's actually true. Um, Dylan did not want to visit his father because um, during, during the previous visit and the months leading up to his disappearance, him and, his, him and his father had an argument. Dylan claimed that his father would always get angry and speak poorly of his mother and brother during his visits. He also said that he felt uncomfortable after finding bizarre photos of his father dressed in women's clothing while wearing makeup and a diaper. Another photo apparently showed red wine eating feces from the diaper. Dylan's older brother, Corey, claims to have seen the disturbing pictures and believes their father killed Dylan after being confronted by the teen. Okay, so... The, the compromising photos of Mark Redwine actually were presented to the court during his trial. And they actually just got released to the public. And they're actually on Google, and which, you, which the pictures are on Google, as well as on the, the exhibits presented to the court. And let me tell you, um, I actually watched Mark Redwine's trial, and I actually saw the pictures in the court exhibits. And let me tell you, they are creepy and disgusting. I do not recommend anyone looking them up, because they're very disgusting. And, um, what else do I have to say? Oh, yes, um, bo um both Dylan and Co his older brother, Corey, discovered the pictures while on a trip with their f with their father Midwest in 2011, and um, let me think what else do I have to say. Um, and they discovered the pictures when Mark was sleeping in the hotel room they were in, and then 
after Dylan discovered the photos, he brought them to... He showed Corey them on his father's laptop, which is, was where they discovered the photos. And um, Corey took a picture on his cell phone of the, the photos because he was going to confront his father with the pictures. Same with um, Dylan. And the next thing, I'm at, the next part I'm going to play is what Corey had to say in an interview. I think Dylan had a lot more than just pictures that he wanted to get across to Mark, said Corey. He's just a sick person, but he's fully aware of his actions, and he's fine with being that person. In the months leading up to Dylan's disappearance, the teen had conversations with multiple people about his father's strange behavior and the photos they had discovered. Dylan was very vocal about his dislike for his father, and made many statements about not wanting to visit or associate with him. Yeah, that was that was true, um... D Dylan became very vocal with his fa dislike for his father um, after he discovered the pictures. And Corey said this in, in court and in an interview. Dylan lost all reasons to look up to his father after discovering the photos. On the night of November 18th, 2012, Dylan made plans to meet with a friend at 6.30 a.m. the next morning. When Dylan did not show up or contact the friend, they sent a text asking, Where are you? But they never got a response. 9.37 p.m. on the 18th of November, 2012, is the last time Dylan sent out a message. Yeah, um, this picture right here is the text messages Dylan was... was that um, Dylan's friend Ryan sent to him. But he, but he didn't hear from him after 9.37 p.m. 9.37 p.m. on the 18th of November, 2012, is the last time Dylan sent out a message. During the investigation, Dylan's blood was found on a love seat in Mark Redwine's living room. They also found blood consistent with Dylan's on the couch, the corner of a coffee table, and under a rug in the same living room. Redwine's home was damaged by a fire and had to be remodeled in March 2012. According to Redwine, Dylan had not suffered any injuries in the home after it was repaired. Cadaver dogs were sent in and responded to smells found in Redwine's truck, the living room, the washing machine, and the clothes he was wearing when Dylan went missing. On July 22, 2017, Mark Redwine was arrested and charged with second-degree murder and child abuse resulting in death. Each charge carries a maximum sentence of 48 years. Redwine is scheduled to face trial in September of 2019. Alright, so, um, um, after, as of this video, um, Mark Redwine was arrested in Bellingham, Washington, and, um, Initially, he was going to face trial in 2018, but was can but was canceled because of um, a mistrial, which was the first mistrial that happened. And then he was going to face trial as of this video in 2019 in September, but that trial was canceled again because his one of his attorneys was arrested for domestic violence and assault. And then his trial was delayed several times last year and this year up until April because of the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic. But his trial finally happened last month and um, it lasted until this month. He's just been found guilty of second degree murder and child abuse resulting in death. And um, he will be facing sentencing this coming October on the 8th. Alright, so, there you have it. That's the commentary video on the Dylan Redwine story. Um, I will end my video here. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching. Bye.